What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Ben Johnson, and today I'm super excited because we're going to be taking a look at audio, specifically how to make your audio cut through the mix using some post-production magic. Let's take a look. All right, welcome back to the channel. As mentioned before, my name is Ben Johnson and I am a content creator based here in Atlanta. My goal with this channel is to be a resource to creatives through reviews, tutorials, behind the scenes content, and honest podcasts. If you are into any of that, make sure you subscribe to join the creative crew. It really does go a long way towards supporting this channel and it makes sure that you never miss out. All right, let's go ahead and dive into the editing software and figure out how we can improve our audio. All right, we're here in the editing system. We've got our headphones on. And the first step that we're gonna be taking today is to add what is known as a subtractive EQ. Now, this is simply just adding a normal channel EQ to the audio. Go ahead and click on this window here to bring up your controls. With the subtractive EQ, our goal is to get rid of unwanted noises. The first step in this process is to roll off the low end and the high end. So we're gonna go ahead and do that here. This is gonna get rid of any noises that are not typically found in the human voice or audible to the human ear, giving us uh, the purest form of audio possible. The next thing we're gonna do is what's known as a sweep. So we're gonna take one of these points here, raise it up, narrow it down, and then we're gonna sweep through the track like this and listen to any unwanted pitches and noises and whistles. My goal with this channel is to be a resource to creatives through reviews, tutorials, behind the scenes content, and honest podcasts. So if you are into that sort of a thing. So I don't like that noise right there. So basically what I'm gonna do is just bring this down to muffle out that sound and kind of get rid of it. Go ahead and repeat this step to remove other frequencies. The next step is to add what is known as a compressor. The compressor is going to allow us to boost the quieter parts of our audio without peaking the higher parts of our audio. Here are settings that I would recommend for the compressor in regards to voice. We're gonna do around negative 18 to negative 20 for the threshold. For the ratio, I would recommend anything from two to one to five to one, but usually I stay around three to one. Makeup gain is going to be used to get your audio level back on track if it's overall too quiet. Knee, I would go to one. Attack, I would go to around five. And release, I would go anywhere from five to 15. And you can see as I'm adjusting these settings, the waveforms are changing. So the goal is to see a little bit of consistency through the waveforms. I'm not gonna go into full detail of how to utilize every aspect of the compressor in this video because this would be a very long video if I did that. But just know that these are recommended settings for voice and I've found them to work very well on different types of audio over the years. Depending on the type of mic that you are using or the room that you're recording in or just the overall environment, you may have unwanted ambient slash room noise. The noise gate plugin is going to help us with that. The threshold is going to be targeting the areas of your audio file where you are not speaking and it is just noise. I would recommend starting somewhere around negative 40. Reduction is how much the noise gate is going to reduce the audio. You can leave this at negative 100. The attack is going to determine how fast the noise gate starts to work. I would recommend starting around 40. Release is going to affect how quickly the noise gate effect releases and your regular audio resumes. I would recommend putting this right around 400. For hold, I would put it right around 40. So the audio file that we were working with was recorded pretty well at negative 12 decibels using a good high quality audio recorder in a room that has little noise. So you won't be able to hear it as much with that. Let me go ahead and show you a clip from the same shoot used with the raw camera audio that does have more noise and you'll see the effect change. We're gonna be taking a look at how to make your audio go from something like this to something a lot cleaner and clearer like this. Let's go. Definitely makes a nice difference. It helps get rid of some of that unwanted noise. All 
All right, jumping back to our other audio, in this next step, we're going to add another channel EQ layer. For starters, we're gonna actually pop on the analyzer. Now when we play the audio, we're actually gonna see a little graph that will show us where the meters are falling. My goal with this channel is to be a resource to creatives through reviews, tutorials. So now we can go in and start to shape the audio a little bit. And as we do, we'll start to see some changes reflected on the graph. My tip for this overall is to you know boost the 100 to 200 range a little bit, as well as the uh, treble end of the audio to give it a little bit of breath that will allow it to pop. Be a resource to creatives through reviews, tutorials, behind the scenes content, and honest podcasts. So if you are into that sort of a thing and wanna support this channel, go ahead and subscribe to all in all, it will definitely make the audio pop a little bit. All right, so the last thing that we're going to add is called an adaptive limiter. Basically what this is going to do is allow us to take all of the changes that we've made and just kind of boost up the levels overall just a little bit. Our goal for our audio of our voice is to get it right around negative three decibels. Before the adaptive limiter, our audio is sitting right around negative six. From the default, we're gonna choose soft limiter because I find it a little less aggressive. And now we can just kind of mess with the gain settings a little bit, maybe up it by three or four decibels so that we can start to see our audio getting right to the negative three range on the meter. All in all, this is going to give us a little bit of a louder signal that will really punch through, uh, especially if we're gonna layer it with music. All right, so I get it. You may be thinking, okay, Ben, that's cool, but that's way too many steps every time I wanna record a video. Well, not to worry. You can actually save this as a preset. To do this, go ahead and select the audio file that you've tweaked, go to File, and then Save Audio Effects Preset. Now you can name this whatever you want. And you can actually choose which category you would like to save it to. I recommend doing custom, and then you can choose every effect that you have added and hit save. Now, if we go over to the custom folder in our preset section, we will see test preset right here. Now, all we have to do is drag that to our clip anytime we want to use that preset. This way, if you have multiple places that you shoot, different recording devices that you use, or maybe recurring clients that you work with, you can save a custom tailored preset for each one to speed up your process and your workflow. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and found some value from it. If you did, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, turn on notifications, and as always, stay creative. Peace.